Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, you are probably already noted that there are two surnames on the presentation, but another guy he wasn't able to make it to make it, so I'm alone. And um, I will show you the tool which we are using a lot in production. It's not about any. There is no theory. There is nothing. Strategies and everything. It's about the real tool, and it's about how it works, and how it's, it's about how we see the multi-site management. Just before, I need to excuse myself because if at some point you are you are understanding that I'm too complicated, I'm saying some strange strange things, <laughs> and uh, and just if you don't understand what I'm saying because I have a terrible Russian accent, <laughs> so uh, so let's get started. Uh, the presentation is about the document tool. Uh, why it's document? Because it's it's the shortcut of doc root, doc root management. Uh, let me introduce myself before. Uh, my name is Oleksiy Tkachenko. I am uh, a project manager and a Drupal architect in Adyax. You probably heard already about Adyax. We are the big company and uh, the, we are the leader in Europe for the Drupal development. Uh, I'm working with Drupal since 2007, from what I from what I remember. Uh, the version was like 4.6 or 4.7. It was horrible. Uh, but now it's, of course, much better than before. Uh, originally, I'm from Ukraine. Uh, but since 2009, I'm living in Paris and working with Adyax for five years, even more than that. Uh, then just a little bit, a little presentation about what we are doing. You probably all saw that already. Um, before we start, uh, I separated presentation into three parts. The first part is theoretical part. I will explain what we are, what are the terms that we are using. The second part is the actual implementation. The third part is the live demo about what we are doing. So by saying doc root, everyone knows what is doc root. For us, it's the Drupal installation. Uh, somewhere on the server. This is the place on the server where your where the, where the, your configuration files are, where your application is. So uh, this is the main point of entrance for the local for the server. Um, by here is why we created the tool. We had different problems, uh, and most of them were coming, of course, from our clients and. Uh, and as, a, as our job is mostly about delivering solutions, so I will just briefly explain what kind of a problems we were trying to fix with this tool. And uh, the first one is that we, we were approached by the big client who said that I'm not okay with working of, with having a lot of Drupal websites with the code duplication. And uh, I have a lot of Drupal agencies all around the world working with the different Drupal websites for, for the client. Let's say it's, it can be the, just the client website or uh, any kind of website. It's just it's global global company. It's, it has a local branches. And uh, they wanted to actually s they, they understand that when there are a lot of agencies we're working, they're all working with the same Drupal. It's still Drupal 7. And uh, what's good is that the Drupal was standardized as a tool for the website management there in this, for this client. So this is a good news. But every agency has its own approach about how, how to work with Drupal. Some people use context. Some people use panels. Some people use anything they want. Sometimes some people don't use views. So uh, and. Another problem is that all the deployment processes were different for each website. So whenever one agency is doing the website for the client, the standards of development are different. The hosting is different. The deployment procedures, of course, are different too. So uh, just to make it more clear, we had the most pro the, the problem, the most, the huge, the the most important problem here was like the deployment of 
all the different websites is painful. It means that the IT department of the company should take all the websites and work with the, with the hosting and deploy with different tools. So it takes a lot of time and it's not standard. Some people use Capistrano, some people use other tools like Chef. Why not? Uh, the production environment was never stable. They didn't know how to merge and how to work of multiple people and how to integrate the work of multiple people in one central place. By saying multiple people, I mean different Drupal agencies working on different websites. Because the goal was to reduce the time, the time frame of the creation of the website and uh, to standardize the process. So everyone is working with the same standard process. Everyone is, the deployment schema is simple. The governance procedures are simple too. Okay, so the next problem, it, well, I already said that, but I just want to put the pressure on it. So the, whenever you have, whenever you're a big company, you don't want to have a different approaches of development. You want, you want to use your own modules. You want to, to be sure that whenever you, people are working on your websites, they are actually using always panels, for example, or always contexts. And uh, for example, all the features are in the default state. So people are using features and the configuration is always in code because it depends on the, on the, the size of the website. But this is the best practice to have the features as default. And uh, most of the people didn't know how to work because whenever you are working on one website as an agency, you are normally using the default directory of Drupal and you're putting everything inside and it just works. But whenever you have some standards, you don't know what, you don't know what to do with that. Or you're putting them in all, but there are some other people working on that, so you are not, you're never sure. The third, prob the third problem that, we, that we've got is the governance. You never know about what is happening. And uh, you want to centralize Drupal. You want to, to use only one Drupal for, for everything. And you don't know who should update the Drupal. You have a, your platform based on Drupal, and all the agencies are using it. And you need to streamline the process of governance. So the governance is always clear. You know that there is a team who is working on the platform, who is getting the Drupal updated. Uh, they update modules. They always know what's happening in your doc route. And uh, they need to know about the latest changes and versions. Another problem was whenever you have, whenever you want to, to centralize everything, you have your Drupal, you have your modules, uh, you have your automated tests. And uh, you, you never know in the multi-site environment how and when to la launch the test. Because the one agency is working on one part of the website in the multi-site environment. Another agency is working in another part, in another, multi in another website in the multi-site environment. And there is no stable version of the whole platform. They don't know how to work with it and when to run the tests. And the, the last problem is that usually cloud hostings doesn't really support the multi-site environment, multi-site management. It always works because, of course, all the, all the people from Acquaya, from Pantheon, it's already inside, so it's, it's not a big surprise for, for anyone. So in order to try to streamline the process of working for different agencies, of delivering different websites in one standard Drupal installation, we created the tool which is called Docman. The Docman is the doc root management. Uh, there is a website on GitHub, so you can just go there and look, look at it. It's very brief, so we are working on documentation. And uh, the first thing that you normally will do to test it, you will have to install the, the Docman game, because the tool is written in Ruby. Uh, so let's get back to the practical example. This is the schema of how we see the different agencies working on the website on the different websites for one in one multi-site environment. As you can see, there is 
everything is based on different Git repositories. So each repository have its, has its own code. We separated the project code, which is uh, usually in your sites slash site module. Uh, which we separated common modules, which are usually in sites slash all. Uh, we separated profiles directory because some of some people actually delivering profiles instead of the websites. It's another approach of, the, of deployment. We all we also we have the core, which is normal, and uh, we, there is a this yellow one. The sites repository is the helper repository to be, which represents the sites directory of Drupal 7 with sites.php and all the common stuff for multi-site environment, and the Git Cloud Git Cloud hooks. This is mostly about Acquia hosting because uh, Acquia hosting provides this paradigm of cloud hooks where you can launch different different actions via the via Acquia. And uh, for example, whenever you want to run any script right after deployment, the cloud. This is this is why they created cloud hooks. You can run different scripts whenever you need. Um, before before I switch to the next slide, I just want you to understand that we created a constructor. This is a tool which really doesn't need to know what what it's building. It can be Drupal, can be Drupal seven, can be Drupal eight, because we don't we actually don't do not rely on Drupal at all. This is the thing that we use to build the doc root. The tool, which is called Docman, is taking all these repositories. And as output, it generates a doc root. And this doc root, based on your template, can be used whenever you need and wh wherever you need. Because if you, if you are using Acquia hosting, your doc root standard is, it, there is one standard. If you are on Pantheon, it's different. If you have your custom hosting, of course, it's, a, it's different too. So we are, by using the tool, we are streamlining this process of people working with different repositories. And if I will take just a practical example of what, we, of what you see here is that uh, you have project A, which is one website. You have project B, which is another website. And uh, you have common modules. And these are the standards you, are want, you want to, to people, for people to use. These are the standard modules like panels, like instance settings, like admin menu, because you want all your websites to have admin menu. Uh, there are profiles, and of course there is a, there is core, and uh, you can see that there are also sites. Uh, okay, so let's switch to the configuration. What we are doing is that before Docman can build anything, you should use your configuration files and put them in the proper places. It's all documented on the website. And this is one. This one is, a, is an example of what we are seeing, of what we are normally doing when we have a multi-site environment with two websites, common modules, common profiles, and uh, some default modules that you want that you want for everyone to use. Uh, you can this you can change completely. What you see here is basically replicates the the doc root of Acquia, if you look at the, the, the master master directory, you can see there is a doc root, there are projects, profiles, and there are, there are also hooks. So Docman will scan everything that you have in this directory and generate the doc root based on the configuration files. And each configuration files, each configuration file describe what are the directory that, that, you, that you want to use what are the Git, the Git repositories that you want to use? In this example, the, I, will, I will need to show you, the, I will show you later how it works. Um, so before the initial stuff, initial, the most important part of Docman is this config repository. By, doing, by, by creating this, you are describing what you want to build. And this is the main configuration file. Uh, so like, like this, you can see that you, you're describing first your environments, because normally you're, if you're focusing on Acquia, and this is an example of Acquia, um, you're, you have your development environment, you have the, your staging environment, and you have your production environment. 
and uh, by using them, you are, you, are, you, are agree you have a, an agreement that you have developed branch to develop, to use the, to, to work with developed environment stage and the master branch to, to use for the master environment, for the staging environment, sorry, and the uh, production environment is usually deployed by tags. So it's only, the, it's just the tag in the master branch. In this file, you are basically showing to Docman what you are, what you are going to, to do and what is your doc root. And in this case, it's Akoya, Akoya Cloud Hosting. And we are saying, we are putting some specific configuration about what are the specific file paths on the Akoya environment, what are the SSH hosts, what, are, what, is, what is SSH user, because the, the tool needs to connect to Akoya Git, and it needs, first of all, what it needs to, to be doing is to push the doc root to Akoya. This is happening automatically and incrementally, and uh, it needs to verify if, if the code is in place. By, by doing this, we are, our tool always know when exactly the code is, the, is in the Git repository and deployed in Akoya, because as you, if you already worked with that, you, can, you probably saw that between push to Akoya environment and the actual deployment of code, it, it can happen in one minute, it can happen in one hour. It depends on the, on the platform load. And our tool knows and can verify if the code is in place. Why we are doing this? Because we need to, to launch scripts. The tool is acting like a layer between the list of repositories that you have and the actual doc root in a multi-site environment. So we are building the doc root and pushing it to Acquire. This example that you see here is about specific, our specific example when we want to have the common modules for all your, for all your people, for all your agencies working with the same Drupal website. And it, it describes to Docman when and where it should get the code and what to launch after. You see, this is like a constructor. You say that in this directory, you need the document, you need to take the common repository. You need to, to, uh, to describe all the environments. And you say that, that after execution, after the build of this directory, launch the scripts. We are using it mostly for launching Drush, uh, features revert, clearing caches, all this kind of normal stuff. And uh, I will just skip everything here because it's, we are, what, we are sh what I'm trying to show you is that each, each, each directory has its own configuration. And this one is about where to get the Drupal core. This one is about where to get the project code. And the project code in this, in this example is just what you have in your sites slash sites directory. It's modules, temps, libraries, etc. Okay, this is core. Sorry. Okay. And this are this is the repository. It's why why we are using why I'm using Acquire as an example because this service represents the cloud hooks of Acquire. So you need the document can take this repository and, and, and put it in place. Okay. As a features, and what we were trying to do is that we are trying to be focused on the environments, on the cloud environments like Acquia and Pantheon because you have only one Git repository there. And if you want to work with the multi-site environment, it's very hard for you because you know that you have different addresses working in the same multi-site environment. They commit some code. You don't know what kind of, what, what is the stable version of the environment. You never know how it's happening. So whenever people deploy something, there is one website which is stable, another website which is not stable. So we wanted to separate all the code and then merge it and create this, the stable versions of the doc root. This is very important. We are not pushing all the time the full doc root because it will be a big overhead. We are always checking out the difference and pushing only the difference. So, you, your, so your system 
will never push whole doc root with like like 20 websites all the time when it's launched. And we are using it in for the for the deployment. I will show you the case study, the actual example of how we use this tool to to manage a lot of different websites. And it's not finished. We have we are saying that we are Drupal 8 ready because we don't really care what Drupal is. We don't we just need to know the structure of the directories you want to build. We are always working in Ajax with these standards that we are forcing people, all the developers, even sometimes it takes more time, we are just forcing them to always keep features by default, to launch to launch update DB all the time, to revert features, and uh, to build registry whenever, whenever they need it. And uh, all the environments have the same configuration, so all your agency, the only thing they, they need to do is to respect your standards. It will, it will not be possible for them to deploy your website without for example, re reverting all the features. So it means that they will be blocked. And uh, this is very important to keep the configuration in files. So this is what we are forcing here. And if something hurts, do it more often. It means that all the time, whenever it hurts all different agencies, some people are okay with that, some, sometimes not. But you know on your side as a client that your Drupal will always be standard. Your multi-site environment will be stable. and people from one agency will never be able to touch the touch the code of other agency, which is very important for you because you don't want them to, to even have access to everything. You only have your Acquia, for example, Acquia hosting with only one Git repository and, you're, and we are acting as a layer. And we can also support multiple doc routes because everything is based on the configuration files. So whenever you can have the common Drupal, common modules, common profiles, and then you can say for each website which doc root it will go. So the tool, what it will do, it will take, it will build the doc root and push it into specific hosting, into a specific place on the hosting. It means that you will get your website whenever needed. You, are, you, you don't have any code duplication because the Drupal is always in place and it's always the same. And uh, like this, for some of political reasons, for example, you can separate doc roots. You can have two, three. Whenever we say we have a stable and versioned production environment, it means that each time something is deployed, each time the doc root is built, the multi-site environment has the stable version. By how we are doing that? Each repository that we use to build the doc root contains the stable version number and and when we build the doc root, we just scan everything, scan, get all the stable version numbers, and normally there are in Git tags, and we are merging all these tags and creating a specific tag which represents the stable version of the doc root. Like this, you are always sure that your doc root is in, sta is in stable position. And we are saying that we are have a Jenkins-friendly workflow because we are just a command line tool, so you can use it whenever you want. It's not, it's not only about Jenkins, it's just about something that is building your tasks, something that you are using to automate your process. And uh, you can see that different deployment scenarios can be achieved through this config. You can simplify the continuous integration in your multi-site environment. Imagine that whenever one agency commits something, change the website in multi-site environment, and they need to launch tests they need to build something on top of it, they're, they're able to do that because you always know that they will never break your multi-site environment. You have your tool to launch your scripts. You know how to work with the scripts. And you can deliver for each agency the stable, the stable environment. Of course, most of the people need to start from something. Imagine that you, you, are, you are new to the system and you need to start working with it. And uh, by doing that, we provide in a simple command to which will generate your local build of the doc root. It will, it will be exactly the same doc root as you will see in Aquoia later. It's, it, <coughs> this is the way for you to get your stable local environment to, to work on it. Your agency, you're an agency, you want to know 
you want to get the standard Drupal, which is standardized in the company level. You have you want to get the standard modules that are standardized by on the company level, and you have your own custom code to produce. So like this, you will get the full the full Drupal. It will work directly with you, and uh, you will not see any other multi-site environments. So you will be only you will be alone in this multi-site environment. You will not see the code of other agency, which is important for the client. Um, and then, in order to work with the staging and, and production environment, and staging and development environment, we provide another, another comments. What's important for you to understand is that it's very simple. There is document build, which says that document, you need to build something. And then there is a, there is a parameter saying the target. And the target can be, in the previous slide, it's local. On this slide, it's git target. Local means that you will just build the doc root and put it somewhere on your local machine. And git target means that you want the, the tool to push directly something to your cloud and to, to your cloud hosting. In this case, it's Sequoia. By, by running this, this command, the first one, the first one, as you see, document build git target staging, will generate the, the doc root with uh, by using master branches of all the repositories that we have and push it automatically in Acquire. This is only one comment for you. So it means that later I will show you an, an example, but imagine that whenever, you, whenever your local agency is changing some custom code and saying, okay, this is, re this is ready for staging, they just push the code in the Git repository and your automated task machine like Jenkins see this and generate the doc root and push it directly to Acquire. So like this, what you achieve, the agency doesn't even need to know what is what the hosting is because your, this is for your tool. It's not for uh, the, their, their job is to deliver the code. Their, their job is not to understand what the hosting is, what, what to do with that. They only push the code and it appears automatically in Acquire by using Jenkins. And we have the specific command to build the live environment, uh, which is stable. Document build git target stable. Uh, how can you how can you understand what kind what kind of parameters you have here? These are actually in the configuration file in the main configuration file. So if when we when we say staging or development, it means that this staging environment is described in my main configuration file. So the document knows what exactly to do with it. Okay, next one. Okay, uh, we don't have a lot of comments. Which, sorry, we don't have a lot of comments here. We are trying to make it simple. You, for now, you only have the init command, which will initialize the repository with the configuration. I will show you an example so you will understand what is that. We have a build command, which will actually build something. Depends on your configuration, and we have a bump command which is used for the production environment. Uh, so each time you work with the repository and uh, you don't have to think about what is work, what is where, whenever you get the access to, to the repository as an agency, like you have your custom code, the tool always generate change log files by using commit commands. It generates the version file so you always know what is the stable version of, the, of your current website. And you have info files like almost everywhere just helping you and describing you what, what the tool is doing. Right now it, it displays a lot of debug commands. You will see when you will, if you will try to, to, to use it, you will see there is a lot of debug commands but this is for us because it's kind of, uh, I will say it's an alpha state where isn't in production but we, will, we always need to know what's happening. And uh, let me just show you a small example, the small case study about what was the problem we had and how we fixed it. One of the clients, they were taking the Drupal installation with one website and cloning it to, for different, for, an, for other websites. It's just the code duplication, they changed, they, copy, they cloned the Drupal, Drupal database, Drupal code, and the website, and then just changed something, and then they changed another thing, 
And like this, you have three different Drupal installations without no multi-site environment. And it's becoming hard to support it because whenever you need to update Drupal, you need to do it three times. So it's a, it's a big pain. And the first problem is that everyone will get with this configuration is that the features, whenever you clone the website, you, ch you just change the site name and your features are already overridden. So you have to work on, uh, again with the features. You have to put them for the cloned website specifically for it. It takes time. And the, what, I, is what, what I already said, the manual deployment, which is not what we want to do, the maintenance and the standards. So whenever the website was cloned, it, it was given to some agency, and they are changing everything there. And this is not a clone anymore. It's just another website which lives its own life. And this is a simple example. As you can see that there is, we only use code of the one website, code of the second website, common modules, Git core, and the Git sites. Like this, you give you give an access to your agency only for the for the site A. You have you give them the read-only access to the common, to the core, and to the sites. So like this, they can change only the code of your of their website, and they have access to all your standard modules and, on, and your standard Drupal core. And as the, uh, what I'm trying to show you is that the doc root is generated by Docman, and everything below it's in Git. So it's just five different Git repositories, nothing special. And sorry, I will get back to it again. Yeah. So this is how this this is how the solution is managed. Like this, you don't have to think about what is what is wrong with the websites. You have only your one Drupal installation and the the com the modules are standard and each code is separated for each agency. So they are very familiar with this approach. And whenever they work on the website, it's still the normal Drupal website. Okay, the next case study is what is basically why we created the tool. Because we wanted to really fix this, these issues. As you can see, the company is global, so they have probably at least 10 or 15 different Drupal agencies all around the world building websites. Drupal is a company level standard, which is great. Uh, and what I wrote here is that in our example, we had three different Drupal agencies, but it can be 10. What kind of problems you usually get with that? This is one of the problems too. They are delivering independent, independently different websites. So all, all the standards are their own. And you cannot, as a client, just say that, okay, you just need to use this one, this module, or, or another module, because some people from their agency are saying that, okay, I'm going, I'm going to use only panels. And others say that I hate panels. I will never use them anyway. And the maintenance, the same. Each agency has its own maintenance. Standards, non-standards. Deployment, what I already said. They're just doing whatever whatever they they want to do, whatever it's whatever is faster for them. And this is what this is not what you want to do. Because normally you want to have a streamlined process. You want to know how much does it cost for you to build the website? How much does it cost for you to standardize the process? And what are what are you winning after? What are the things that you are getting whenever when you have only one Drupal core and multi site environment and the and common modules? And this is the schema of what was implemented. It's, it's basically the same. You have the same different Git repositories for each, for each thing you, need, you want, to, you want to, to separate. You have the integration platform, which is based on the Jenkins and uh, GitLab, and Document, of course. And we have a doc root, which is an Acquire Cloud. It's only one subscription, only one Git repository. And what is what is what is what's done here is that the integration platform have Jenkins installed and it has GitLab installed. If you know what GitLab is, GitLab. If you don't know what is it, is it's the it's like a GitHub, but for your local environment. You can install, you can manage the repositories in the web interface. It's much more practical. 
and like this, whenever you need to create different repositories, you can do it with the web interface. You don't have to go on the server and do some git init, bear, and all this stuff. So you manage all your repositories in GitLab. You launch your tasks in Jenkins by using Git hooks, which means that, for example, if one agency is committing only to site A, the Jenkins via Git hook see that some changes happened, build the development doc route, and push it directly to Acquire. So in five minutes, it depends from two to five minutes normally, the agency see directly the code in the Acquire environment, which is pretty great because whatever they need is they, they, they push the code and they see the result. They don't even know how what, what's happening and how it works. The integration platform do it, do it all for them. Okay, so I will show you a small demo about how it's working because I totally understand that whenever the first time you encounter this kind of system, you say, ah, it's not that clear. The configuration files are big. You don't really see what you can do with that. And uh, I will just show you the simplest example with several repositories. Here is the list of repositories that I have. And they're all local. I'm not going to show you something very complicated. I didn't, I cannot even push to any, to anywhere because they're on my local computer. <coughs> we have the configuration repository, which is the main one, where you describe what you want to build. We have the core with Drupal inside. We have the sites directory with sites.php and uh, all the multi-site stuff. We have the project two, re project 2 repository, project 1 repository, which represents just your modules, themes, libraries. And uh, we have, you have your common modules, which are in sites all normally. And uh, this repository, if I will show you, uh, this, is a, this represents the Aqua repository. It will be generated, and uh, by I have it here to show you what's exactly the result of our tool. So let's imagine that I'm someone who is not really understanding what's happening. I'm, the, I'm an agency who is just want to, to work with this environment. And uh, I want, first of all, what I want to do, I want to start committing my code. I didn't want to understand what's, what's around here because this is the platform level. And uh, I have my configuration repository. And configuration repository represents this one. And uh, this, is what, what, this is what was on the slide. I say that the file pass to the Acquire environment is this one. You can find it all the time in the, in the Acquire dashboard. The URL f to connect via SSH is here. The user is here. And I have three environments, dev, test, and prod. So the configuration repository contains of common doc root profiles, projects, and sites. So each directory has its own configuration. Here I say that the common modules are here. The development and staging and stable environments are here and represented by the branch develop master. Here I say that the core is in this repository. This, the files are all the same. As I said already, I will I, I have to repeat the document will scan your config repository and build whatever you say to build. For the profiles, in this case, in this example, I have no common profiles for, for everyone, so it's just disabled like this. 
these are the projects and again this is the configuration file saying that the, the project one is here what I need to do after execute what I need to do be after and before deployment and the same for the project two and here the site repository so let's get back to business I'm I know that I need to get my first of all I know there is some kind of a Drupal installed somewhere and I know that it's a multi-site environment I, I've been already told and uh, I want to start working so I'm first of all what I'm doing is that I'm I want to I want to init and get the initial state of the doc root so I'm doing document init I say that my directory where I will work will be like demo doc root and the four the fourth parameter will be the configuration repository so like this document will know how and what to build and I'm using my local repository so it's somewhere like this document Okay, and this one is my configure is my is my uh, repository with the testing configuration which I just showed you. So what I'm doing here is that this command will not do much; it will just prepare the directory for you to work. So what it what it what it did is that first of all it it, cre it created my uh, demo doc root, and I have only configuration repository here, nothing more, nothing less, and. Uh, then I'm just building the doc root. I'm saying local because I'm a local computer. I don't want it. I didn't want build doc root to go anywhere. It just stays here. So I say, Tokman build local development. And we have a lot of debug information here. And it says complete. Uh, when it says complete, that it will probably be a little bit better like this. We had this config repository. We have now we have a new directory created, which is called master, and now and we have the states repository. So the master repository is it basically get all the information from all the different directories in your configuration repository and get it all together. So you have your common and. Uh, I will just I just show you what's what's inside my different common repositories. I have this common test. I have libraries, modules, themes. Nothing nothing specific here. And uh, automatically doc Docman knows that I need to get this repository and it puts it in this directory. Then there is a doc root. This is exactly what we wanted to have the the Drupal core. Then there are projects with the custom with the custom modules and the uh, websites and there is a websites directory so by by doing this by doing this i already have with one command my local development environment because i oh, the only thing i need to do is to get this docker directory that to get my web server and point this to this directory and it and it directly it will directly work you have your sites you have uh, your project you have another project and they are all coming from from different repositories and the tool just took all of them and put them inside yeah we still have some some time um, okay so now as an agency I have my doc root I can work with it I can commit some code so what I'm doing I'm going to the master projects project one this represents one website and I'm on the develop branch so I just want to, ch to change something I say that what do we have here okay we will just change something here and say like this and we just commit it as, as usual there is nothing specific here <coughs> sorry um, <laughs> Commit. it 
Okay, it's committed. So I just changed it something on my website. And then directly, for example, I'm just taking this code, putting it in the staging, and uh, I want it, I want it to, 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 to be directly committed to Acquire. So imagine what, imagine what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing here is that I'm just doing a checkout of a master branch. In this example, it will be, it will be, will be fairly simple. I will just merge my developer branch with my master. Like this, so I, so my change is now in the master, and imagine that whenever you do this commit, there is something triggers and build directly the Docker to Nakoya, which means that let's take an exa another example that I'm on the server and I received a new commit, so I'm just they doing one moment. Uh, come on. So I will, I will get this example. So I will just, what I will type here is that document test. And I want to get the actual state of what will be pushed to Acquire. So I committed something and uh, on the server side, via Jenkins, for example, I'm launching this comment. Which means that I want to get all the latest commits from my repositories from the master branch prepare them, merge them into one place, and push it directly as a target to acquire. So this is it. Right now it starts to get, takes, it takes all the repositories, get, get this, the master branch, merge them, and okay, something goes wrong, as usual. Ah yeah, I don't have a stage. Yeah. Environment, so I will just build the development one. Notice that it's trying, it's, it's, it's saying SSH, SSH target checker, it means that it right now it's verifying if the code is in place in Acquire. And what it's doing the, right now is generating everything and push it directly. So I will just log into my Acquire dashboard. It's not very, not very visible. Okay. And it says it's complete. And I see my commit here directly. So what I just did, I just changed the, changed the code in only one of my repositories, build the doc root and push it automatically to Acquire, which means that, first of all, your code, your modules are all separated, the custom code is separate, and the tool is automatically working with the Git repository of Acquire, so you don't have to, to do it by, by yourself. Be, be, of course, you can achieve the same result by writing a lot of SSH, SSH script and bash, and like this, you're just getting this tool and working with it as you're working with the, with the normal environment and you're building whatever you want to build. Um, so I will just switch back to the presentation. If something is not clear, just ask me questions after because I understand that it's kind of a, it's, this is kind of a thing that needs to be, first of all, you need to think about that where and when and how you want to use it. When you will understand the power of this tool, you will see that by, by doing this, you can achieve a lot of things. You can achieve the continuous integration in the multi-site environment where you, where you don't have, where, where the code is separated, which is quite rare. So I'm switching back. Okay. Right.
right now what we are going to do is that we are we are, we are going to generate the background image for all the websites it means that all the websites in multi-site environment right now they we only, we only share code so you only have the code you don't have any databases you your standard environment is different so we are going to generate automatically with the tool the background image so, which means that if you are an agency working on the website in multi-site environment then you just launch the tool and get the full virtual machine with the dock root already built with the, all the servers servers config, configured directly and ready for your development uh, another another thing that we are going to do is that we need a wizard as you can see, as you already saw that the configuration file is quite quite big and it's not that clear exactly what you want to do with that so we want to help people to understand so we are we are going to write a wizard for that and of course the documentation the documentation right now it's in it's we don't have a lot but on the website the example that I just showed to you is available so you will be able to replicate exactly the same environment that I did you will have the configuration is already configured to have uh, to have Aquoia as a target so just try it again what we are going to do and where we need some help if someone if someone is interested with that we want to have comp configuration templates for various environment it's a big pain for f all the time whenever you need to create a, a new a, a new um, uh, configuration template there is a lot of manual work you set up this SSH host it's that's a lot of things to do so we, we want to prepare just the, the different templates so whenever whenever you want you will get your dock root built for Pantheon for example uh, the deployment targets you saw only the local one when which generates the dock root on your local machine you saw git target which push the dock root to some git repository but we want to have more because this is not not a big not, not a big issue to, not a big issue to create another target saying that just take the repository and put it on some SFTP file and some FTP file system it doesn't it doesn't change anything it's just the target of where you want your dock root to be to be hosted and the templates okay so now if you have any questions just let me know please yeah, you can use microphone here I uh, think okay so I uh, thank you very much for the useful presentation uh, my name is Mori uh, I I have a couple questions uh, around it's, it's a bit more h higher level than uh, the actual doc, uh, the, the problem that document is trying to solve but uh, there's there are some implications to sharing uh, a, well different sites sharing a doc route for example um, if you have different sites using different modules, but on the set, set you know, on the same um, uh, stack, then mm -hmm. those sites would be sharing like uh, APC and memcache and all that. So yeah, um, so the, you know, there, there are some you know, the, those issues, um, some some of the issues which I'm aware of. But do, can you identify any other kind of pitfalls or? There is there is a one pitfall, and for example, and let's take Aquoia as an example. It's of it's as you said, it's APC memory, because like this, if you if you if many if many websites are not aware, many different agencies are not aware about what mod modules are used, and they put some let's say let's say this, they they take views and put them in their local code, which will generate a big duplication, which will of course take a lot of APC memory, so. This is kind of thing that needs to be managed mostly on the uh, on the platform level, S directly saying to, to agencies what kind of models they can use, and there is not a lot of code duplication. So we are using this tool for um, one doc root with uh, at least 55 websites inside. So it's, it generates <coughs> it's for only two agencies, but it they're all very separated, and it's it just works. Okay, thanks. And sorry, another question. So, yeah, of course. Um, so, if, if there are various um, 
vendors working on you know multiple websites on a single uh, Drupal installation, and if you need to upgrade the Drupal core, uh, how, uh, how would you coordinate it? Because there are some you know core updates, for example, Drupal 7.2, 3 or 2, 4, which uh, addressed um, uh, DOS issue with uh, mem memcache mm. and you know things like that. You know that have a big impact on all sites. How how would you manage that? The workflow for updating Drupal and this in this case is one of the things that we try trying to solve, to, to try to solve and we achieved. It means that you have your own core repository in Git with the Drupal core, and there is a team who is working only on the platform who is responsible for maintaining modules for updating Drupal. So they just update Drupal in this repository, and they write. And there is a way to launch some scripts when the Docker is built. So they just write scripts, put, put them in the SH files in the directory, and uh, you they build and your tool and non sorry uh, the Jenkins which builds the Docker root, it just launch, it gets the latest Drupal core, generate the, the Docker root, and launch the script which will launch all the updates like uh, update db for all the websites in the inside in the environment because the tool already knows how many websites they have and you can easily write the small configuration small script which just do for each for all the websites in the environment launch this sh command so this is the workflow we imagine how it and we already did it once and it worked okay thank you very much you're welcome any more questions I've experimented with uh, multi-site environments in the past, so I actually made scripts in Bash, yeah. which kind of sucked, but uh, it worked. Yeah, everyone had this kind of scripts here and there, and that's why we actually started to. Uh, taking the Ruby approach is very nice. Um, but uh, one problem I ran frequently was having different versions of modules, patches, patching core, these kind of things are, are um, quite hard to maintain on this kind of infrastructure. Um, but one, one um, particular usefulness I see for this is, for example, when you have um, uh, an installation for each client uh, using this uh, tool, uh, and you just add the components you want the tool to fetch and to deploy on the specific environments. Yep. This is a good use for this tool. I wouldn't use it for um, managing multiple sites of multiple clients. I think that's way too risky. That's just a remark. Mm, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, this kind of, this kind of, there are a lot, a lot of different use cases of the tool. We are using it to build the doc roots and pushing it to some servers, but you, you can actually build anything you want because there, the configuration files are standard and you just only, you only say what to get from where and where to push. And like this, you don't have to write tons of scripts and uh, your Drupal environment will be ready directly. And you don't have to like do a git clone of core, do a git clone of the project file. You just launch the build and work with it directly. Precisely, that's uh, where I see the, the great usefulness of this tool is automating the, the git clones, the, the git pulls and deploying. To yeah, the, to this the is targets. what we are doing with Jenkins. For example, we, we are we created the development and staging workflow are quite simple. Whenever someone commits to develop and push to develop branch, it generates the doc root and push it directly to Acquire incrementally. So there is nothing specific. The same for stage. But for the production, what we are doing is that first of all we are we are Jenkins, there are different modules and you can say that the build must be approved. And that and we are using this tool and with in this uh, in the merge with cloud hooks saying that Okay, whenever someone bumped the version of the stable of the stable website, they say that my website has a version 1.1. What we are doing is that we are getting the database from production environment via cloud hooks. We are putting this database on the specific environment for automated testing, and we are launching the automated tests directly because we can build the doc root for each environment quite f fairly easy. So you, you see, you see my point is that I just launch, I launch the tool, it gets the database from production to the array environment, let's say to the, the testing environment, 
and the launch tests because you can you can simply launch tests with it whenever you have the, the, the way to put SH, SH comments inside mm -hmm. you just launch behead test you whatever whatever you want and in Jenkins we can we, we can say that we launch build and the build is not pushing anything to acquire until it's validated by someone there is a team who is who is responsible only for that they are seeing that the new docker version has been built the stable tag is this the change log is automatically generated by taking all the changes from all the repositories and they say okay i validate the build and jenkins continue to to deploy the production environment to acquire and in acquire you are getting the i cannot show you the real example because i don't have a production subs uh, subscription on acquire but it generates the tag which you can just directly deploy from the dashboard. Yes, 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 precisely. Tags are really yeah. useful for deploying specific stable versions yeah. on specific environments. So we generate it by using the time and the date. So you, you can directly see what's happening. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Anything else? OK, then, so thank you very much. And uh, if something wasn't clear, just find me I can I can explain you because we have a lot of different case studies so I will answer all the questions thank you